Anatomy and Physiology for the Beauty Industry, Bones, Muscles and Nervous System. Introduction. When we're performing beauty treatments, from massage to makeup, we have to have an understanding of the bones and muscles, i.e. the underlying structures of the areas we're working on. Some treatments are designed to have direct effects on those structures, whereas some are performed to enhance the appearance. It's essential in our industry that we understand the basic principles of the nervous system as we stimulate nerve endings through manual and electrical treatments, creating stimulation, relaxation or muscle contractions. The skeleton. Your skeleton allows you to move about and is the underlying structure that protects your organs and creates your posture. You have bone marrow within your bones that is responsible for blood cell production as well as housing minerals like calcium. You have more bones in childhood than you do in adulthood. They fuse as you grow and they actually refresh throughout your life through a process called ossification. Types of bones. Your skeleton is held together by ligaments, cartilage and tendons. We have various joints such as ball and socket, hips, shoulders, hinged, fingers, toes and fixed joints, skull. Bones come in different shapes and sizes, such as flat, skull, long, limbs, short, wrist and ankles, irregular, vertebrae, and sesamoid, patella, which are small bones developed around joints. Skeleton sections. The skeleton can be divided into two sections. The axial skeleton, the core of the body, which is the skull, vertebral column, ribs and sternum, and the appendicular skeleton, which is the shoulder girdle, upper limbs and pelvic girdle, i.e. the attachments to the axis. The skull. Your skull rests at the top of the vertebral column, spine, and protects your brain and provides attachment for your facial muscles. Two parasol bones at the back of the head that form the roof of the skull. Occipital bone, which is the back of the skull. Two temporal bones at the side of the head, in front of the ears. Frontal bone, which forms the forehead and eye sockets. Two zygomatic bones, which form the cheeks. Two nasal bones to form the nose. Mandible bone, which forms the jaw, only moving bone in the face. Two maxilla bones, which form the upper jaw and front of soft palate. You have facial bones such as palatine, forms floor of the nose and roof of the mouth. Vomer, this is the dividing wall in the nose. Ethmoid, this forms the nasal cavity. Turbinate, the outer wall of the nose. Sphenoid, this forms the back of the eye sockets. Vertebral column, spine. This is the very important protective area of the neural pathways and spinal cord. It provides attachment for muscles and contains 33 irregular shaped bones called vertebrae. There are intervertebral discs, pads, between each vertebrae which cushion and provide some flexibility. Thorax, ribs and sternum. This area encloses your heart and lungs. The ribs are curved bones which form a cage. You have 12 pairs in total and some people have an additional rib. The ribs are attached to the sternum in pairs apart from the bottom two. The sternum is the bones of the chest, the breastbone, and has three sections. The top section is called the manubrium, the middle section is called the main body and the bottom section is called the xiphoid process. The appendicular skeleton. The shoulder girdle is the connection between the upper limbs and thorax and is part of the appendicular skeleton. You have a clavicle, which is a long curved bone at the front of the shoulder girdle, a scapula, which is a large triangular flat bone at the posterior of the shoulder girdle, a humerus, which is the long bone of the arm. Upper limbs. A humerus, the long bone of the arm. A radius, the shorter forearm bone, thumb side. An ulna, the long bone of the forearm, little finger side. Carpals, wrist bones. Metacarpals, hand bones. Phalanges, finger bones. Lower limbs. Femur, which is the thigh bone. Patella, knee bone. Tibia, larger of the lower leg bones, fibula, smaller of the two lower leg bones, tarsals, ankle bones, 
metatarsals, foot bones, phalanges, toe bones. Muscles. Your muscles work in conjunction with your skeleton to maintain posture while body movements generate heat and maintain a healthy temperature. Muscle movements can be voluntary, such as using the full body to walk or swim, making a localised movement, waving a hand, moving the head, and even involuntary, such as the beating of the heart, the contraction of the bladder. Muscle tissue has the ability to contract and extend whilst maintaining elasticity, and it must be able to respond to stimulus via a nervous response, a message from your brain via the motor nerve telling it to move. It must be strong against resistance, toned to maintain shape and posture, and able to endure repeated contractions, otherwise muscle fatigue will occur where it becomes weak and can no longer respond to the stimulus. Voluntary muscles. Voluntary muscle tissue is the muscles of the skeleton, which are made from bands of tissue fibres that extend to form tendons and are attached to your bones. Muscle terminology key. Anterior, front, posterior, back, adduct to draw inward, abduct to draw away, medial, situated to the middle, lateral, situated to the side, dorsiflex, to bend backwards, plantar flex, to bend the foot, plantar, the sole of the foot, supinate, to turn to face upwards, pronate, to turn to face downwards, origin, the static end of the muscle, where it is attached, usually bone, insertion, the moving part of the muscle which contracts and shortens, it is pulled towards the origin. Involuntary muscle. Involuntary muscle tissue is the smooth muscles found in your digestive and urinary tracts, vessels and organs which are not controlled consciously by your brain instead of working in accordance with hormones and nerve impulses. Cardiac muscle tissue is your smooth heart muscle which contracts rhythmically and never rests. Muscles, head and neck. There are many muscles in the body and in our industry we should have a good understanding of the main muscles of each area we are working on. Here are some examples of the muscles of the head and neck. Frontalis, corrugator and procerus, orbicularis oculi, nasalis, orbicularis oris, mentalis. Here are some examples of muscles of the upper body. Pectoralis, trapezius, biceps, triceps, brachioradialis, rectus abdominis. Here are some examples of muscles of the lower body. Gluteus maximus, sartorius, quadriceps, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, gastronomius, nervous system. The nervous system helps to maintain homeostasis by reacting to changes internally and externally to the body. It will send messages from the brain to organs, muscles, glands, etc. to generate a response such as a muscle contraction, hormone secretion, etc. The nervous system consists of the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, the spinal and cranial nerves. Your sensory organs and nerves send messages to your brain via the spinal cord. This is the afferent system. The information is analysed and a response message is sent to the relevant area by your motor nerves. This is the efferent system. Your eyes play an important role in relation to your nervous system. Here are the key parts of the eye. Cornea iris, pupil, lens. Sympathetic nervous system. The somatic nervous system sends impulses from your central nervous system to the skeletal muscles. The autonomic nervous system is independent and controls secretion of hormones from glands, involuntary muscles and organs. It is divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Sympathetic nerves react to stress and speed up body activity, increased heartbeat, etc. Parasympathetic nervous system. 
Parasympathetic nerves inhibit activity once the stress is over and the body can return to normal. Neurons. Neurons are the nerve cells which send impulses or messages through the body. They vary in shape and size, but each contain a cell body with nucleus, axons, which transmit impulse information away, and dendrites, which receive and transmit impulse information. Spinal cord. In the central nervous system, it is the spinal cord which connects the nervous system to the brain, working as a neural pathway for information. It runs down from the back of the cervical vertebrae of the neck to the coccyx tailbone area. It is protected by the vertebral column and spinal fluid. Reflex actions. There are cases when information does not have time to go to the brain for processing, such as touching something painful or hot, for example a hot cup of coffee, and your reaction is to pull away. This is a reflex action. This happens as pain receptors are stimulated, meaning that the information travels straight from the spinal cord to the motor nerves, completely bypassing the brain. This is an important action as those milliseconds of a difference can protect you from further danger.